My name is um, Juan Ruben Vallejo Regrado, and I am from Guadalajara, Mexico. My name is Mona Mara Usman, and I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm Maria Valderrama, and I'm from Milky, Chihuahua, Mexico. I'm Ryan Yang. Uh, I was born in Minnesota, St. Paul. Well, being here in the U.S., it was hard for me to learn English at first. And it's kind of an interesting story on how I actually picked it up. Um, I would watch like late night talk shows with um, like TV hosts and everything. And I just really enjoyed the way that they talked. And so I recorded them and I would watch it over and over again um, until I kind of like picked up on how they would talk. So I dropped my accent a little bit. I wasn't like the, I was pretty bright as a kid. Like I, I was pretty smart, but I wasn't very well behaved. <laughs> I would like, <laughs> stab kids with pencils <laughs> and um, do a lot of unnecessary things. I feel sometimes like I'm not going to get to college because of the racism and discrimination against Mexicans because they, they only see the bad side. People will always only see the bad side and take note on the bad side but they'll never look at like what you're doing good and what's right. Me and my mom wear a headscarf and so people just assume that we're terrorists, I guess, but that's not what we are. That's not what our religion teaches us. Just being in public, people would find ways, like people would stare me down, and they'd, like, if I'm walking in the street or something, they'd go the opposite direction. And I've noticed that a lot, actually. Even when, when I was younger in school, people would threaten to take off my scarf. People couldn't accept who I was as a person grandparents, my parents, and my aunts and uncles all uh, immigrated here from Laos. The secret war was a war where the North Vietnamese were trying to take over just for territory and they ended up driving out the Hmong people who lived in the mountains there. All the Hmong people were always, they got sponsored to come over here so they would have no money basically to start except for a few dollars and they would have to find a home to support their families and all, they would also have to leave some of their family behind. And then the hardest thing when they got to the U.S. is looking for a job and trying to support their family all at once while trying to learn into this new society, this new culture, and trying to fit that all together. I want them to know that Islam is a religion of peace and to know that the, what the media shows is not what we really are. So I know President Obama has like made a couple like messages out to like Muslims saying that you guys are Americans, like the people who are born here, you guys are Americans, you guys are not just foreigners. So it didn't really hurt me anymore as it did when I was younger my religious uh, community like tries to host events to show the good like the good side of us because what they see in media is not us and so we try to show what we really are that we try to invite like other non-muslims to see what we actually do to all the latinos out there my advice to you is to just keep working to get to college or wherever you want to go. Take pride in who you are and where you come from. And also remember to defy the stereotypes Latinos face and show them what we're really made of. Well, I feel like what they did was they used that as motivation to further the expectation of others. So they got degrees, they got, they graduated, they got new jobs, better jobs than most. Those have worked their hardest to provide for their kids and my parents has, have also done the same for us. We need to be better like mentally. I think it was more of like we need to be stronger um, and I think that comes with the pride as well. When, when you're proud of who you are, when you're proud of what you do, it allows you to um, look at that situation and say, you know, it happened, 
um, because a lot of a lot of times I see the Mexican culture having an issue, and then being able to just walk past it, um, and that's kind of how I've seen people heal: that they walk past it and they become better people. They take the situation and they turn it around and they make it into a positive somehow. So I think um, one way we could heal is just kind of. You know, taking that historical trauma and realizing that our culture isn't dead. Um, we still celebrate, we still practice a lot of the traditional things that we had. And if we just are still proud of what that is and we just hold on to that, I feel like we can become better.